In the last video, we discussed various dependence metrics. Any real-world phenomenon has statistical variation, and metrics are one-number summaries which try to encapsulate the salient information from these statistical variations. However, the data points which are measurements of the real-world phenomenon can be or are fully represented with a distribution. Metrics are often functions of the distribution of the data. So they are convenient because they are one number summaries, but they can also miss information that a distribution will fully capture. For example, suppose we have the following data set here that's represented with the blue line. The blue line shows or is a kernel density estimate of the distribution of data. Now, a one number summary of this distribution might be the mean of the data. So we can take the mean by computing the average of all of the values that we've that are in our sample. However, I've added some outliers to this data and, I, and you can see that I've done that here. Um, and then what I'm showing in this plot is, is uh, the mean of the data with the outlier and the mean of the data without the outlier. So the mean without the outlier seems to be around zero, which is how the data was, was generated up here. And the mean of the data with outlier is around 15 or so. So what is the takeaway from this? Um, for the purposes of this course, the takeaway is that one number summary metrics or summary statistics, unfortunately, do not capture the full dynamics of the underlying data. There's a whole field of research which investigates what are good one number summaries and how can they be robust to things like outliers. Uh, but that's not what we're going to focus on in this course. What we care about or what our takeaway is that the one number summary does not fully capture the data. Um, we need to know the distribution of the data in order to do that. So while the math to take distributional information rather than a one number summary is more difficult, it allows us to make better predictions and also make better estimates of the uncertainty associated with the predictions that we make. Therefore, distributional modeling is very important. Um, distributions can be one dimensional, and in that case, they are called univariate distributions, or they can be multidimensional, and in that case, they're called multivariate. There are many parametric forms of univariate distributions, such as the Gaussian distribution, the exponential distribution, the beta distribution, and so forth. The difficulty is when we start modeling multivariate distributions. There are only a few parametric forms of multivariate distributions. Um, some of the more common ones are the multivariate Gaussian distribution and the multivariate T distributions. And while they are pretty flexible, they unfortunately cannot capture a lot of real world dynamics. Um, secondly, these distributions are not flexible in two specific ways. So let's explore what those ways are. Suppose we have a multivariate Gaussian distribution, and we can write the parametric form as it's shown here, where we have two standard deviations representing each of the marginal distribution standard deviations, um, and we have means, and we this mathematical formula represents the form of the of the multivariate Gaussian distribution. Um, so now let's compute the marginal distribution of it. So the marginal distribution, if you remember, is we can compute it by integrating out the variable that we don't care about or the variables that we don't care about. So in this case, if we want to find the marginal distribution of X, we can integrate out Y and this form if you actually perform this integral where f of x, y is defined as the bivariate distribution here, you'll get this answer to the right here. And what you'll notice is that this is the exact same form or the exact same formula as the univariate Gaussian distribution. And you'd get the same result if you computed the marginal distribution of y. Uh, now, I don't show the example here, but if we had a multivariate student t distribution, and we computed the marginal distributions, we'd also get univariate student t distributions. So one limitation that we've identified of this bivariate Gaussian distribution model is that 
the univariate distributions also follow a Gaussian distribution. So um, it's, it's a limitation in that it's not configurable. It's not necessarily a limitation in terms of what it can model, um, even though it cannot model everything. Um, but the, the limitation is the fact that we can't choose. Uh, as, let's explore the second limitation now, which is remember that the purpose of a multivariate distribution is to model marginal distributions with a specific dependent structure. So in the multivariate distri Gaussian distribution case, for example, that dependent structure is captured by the correlation matrix. And the correlation matrix is a matrix of pairwise correlations between each marginal element of the data. So in this case, in this bivariate case, the correlation matrix would be uh, a matrix with the correlation of X and Y. And in the previous videos, I've already explained some of the limitations of the correlation coefficient. Remember that correlation only measures a linear dependence and cannot capture nonlinear dynamics. So now we see a second limitation in the traditional parametric kind of multivariate distribution formed, in this case, the Gaussian distribution, which is that that, that second limitation is that the dependence structure is predefined and unchangeable. Uh, so in summary, traditional multivariate distributions, such as the multivariate Gaussian distribution and the multivariate T distribution have two primary limitations. One, all marginal distributions follow the same parametric form. And two, the dependence structure between the marginal distributions is predefined and inflexible, i.e. not changeable. So what if we could combine various marginal distributions with a predefined dependent structure of our choosing? For example, what if we could combine a beta distribution and an exponential distribution with tail dependence? Traditional methods of multivariate modeling don't allow us to do that. But that's exactly what copulas are for. So we'll start diving into copulas in depth in the next video. I'll see you there.